Welcome to Ahmed's World Nature, where we explore the wonders of the natural world. In today's episode, we delve into the fascinating history of the Barbary Lion, once a majestic inhabitant of the Atlas Mountains in North Africa. Join us as we uncover their captivating story and learn about their extraordinary characteristics. The Barbary lion, also known as the North African lion, Atlas lion, and Egyptian lion, was a subspecies of lions that inhabited the Atlas Mountains in North Africa. It was renowned for its large size and distinctive mane. The mane of the Barbary lion was long and dark, extending over the shoulders and down to the belly. It is believed that the development of such long manes was influenced by factors such as ambient temperatures, nutrition, and testosterone levels. In terms of size, Historical accounts from hunters in the 19th and early 20th centuries suggest that the Barbary lion could reach lengths of up to 3 meters and weigh over 300 kilograms. However, the accuracy of these accounts is questionable. In captivity, the size and weight of big cats are generally smaller compared to their wild counterparts. Male Barbary lions in zoological collections vary in length from 2.3 to 2.8 meters, while females can reach up to 2.5 meters in length. The Barbary lion's historic range spanned approximately 1,600 miles across the Atlas Mountains, including the Rif Mountains in Morocco, the Ksaur and Amur Ranges in Algeria, and the Oras Mountains in Tunisia. They also roamed the Barbary Coast, Libya, and Egypt, which is why they are sometimes referred to as Egyptian lions. As carnivores, Barbary lions preferred large prey. In the Atlas Mountains, they fed on Barbary stag and gazelle, while in other regions, they hunted red deer and wild boar. When these prey species became scarce, Barbary lions would sometimes resort to attacking domestic livestock such as sheep and cattle, which often led to conflicts with humans seeking to protect their livelihoods. The hunting methods of Barbary lions were never accurately documented, but it is believed that, similar to the Asiatic lion, they would kill their prey by strangulation and share the kill among their pride. During the time of the Roman Empire, the Barbary lion's range extended across the Mediterranean Sea, and animals from this region, including lions, were sourced by the empire. Barbary lions were pitted against gladiators in the Roman Colosseum and in amphitheaters throughout the empire. Many of these lions, along with gladiators, perished in these spectacles. Lions were also depicted in ancient Egyptian artworks. Barbary lions were believed to be less social compared to other lion subspecies, often living alone or in male-female pairs with their offspring. This behavior was likely influenced by the lower prey densities in their habitats compared to the savanna living lion populations. Sultan, the most famous Barbary lion in Clyde Beatty's circus, was a true powerhouse and widely regarded as the greatest fighter of his time. In an epic showdown, he faced off against Nero, Clyde Beatty's oldest and strongest lion, who held the impressive seventh spot on the list. Ultimately, Sultan emerged victorious, defeating Nero and claiming his rightful place as the new leader of the arena. Sultan's incredible skills and dominance left no doubt about his prowess. Sultan's sheer presence was awe-inspiring. He possessed remarkable strength and courage, making him an impressive lion indeed. Clyde Beatty saw Sultan's potential and wanted to feature him in the 1932 movie Big Cage, where he would engage in thrilling fights with tigers. However, Sultan's power became evident when he swiftly dispatched a male tiger during filming. This unexpected outcome led to the removal of the fighting scene, as Sultan's dominance was too swift and intense to be captured adequately on film. Consequently, the director's team had to choose another lion to extend the lion-tiger fight sequence. Sultan's victories extended beyond lions and included his triumphs over tigers. Throughout his illustrious career, Sultan defeated many formidable opponents, including the Caspian Tiger, Siberian Tiger, and Bengal Tiger. These extraordinary accomplishments are often mentioned in Clyde Beatty's book, solidifying Sultan's status as a lion of unparalleled toughness and power. The Barbary lion is considered extinct in the wild, and it is highly likely that they are extinct in captivity as well. The last known wild Barbary lion was shot in the Moroccan part of the Atlas Mountains in 1942. There were reports of sightings in the 1950s, but they were never substantiated. Some believe small populations may have survived until the early 1960s, but this remains uncertain. 
The royal lions, which were offered to royal families in Morocco and Ethiopia and considered descendants of Barbary lions, were thought to have survived until the late 1960s when a respiratory disease decimated their numbers. While there are lions in zoos considered to be partly descended from the Barbary lion, no fully pure Barbary lions exist today. Sightings reported in recent decades have not been genetically confirmed, and the International Union for Conservation of Nature IUCN, considers the Barbary lion extinct in both the wild and captivity. However, there are Barbary lion lookalikes in captivity. The Rabat Zoo in Morocco historically housed Barbary lions, and some of these animals were transported to zoos in Europe. The Atlas Lion Project, initiated in the 1990s, aimed to reduce hybridization among the Barbary-like lions in captivity and eventually reintroduce them into the wild. However, due to political instability in the Barbary lion's former range, the project was put on hold and lost momentum in some participating zoos. Nonetheless, descendants of the Atlas Lion Project still exist today, resembling their majestic ancestors that once roamed North Africa. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the realms of nature. We hope you enjoyed our exploration of the Barbary lion, a regal species lost to time. Stay tuned for more captivating episodes on Ahmed's World Nature, where we continue to celebrate the beauty and diversity of our planet's extraordinary wildlife.